Hey, I'm in front of a camera today to talk to you about how many CF net CDF files you should be dividing your data into. So we call this concept granularity. So finer granularity means you're creating more files, which are as a consequence smaller. And coarser granularity means you're dumping more data into less files, which are as a consequence larger. So which is best? Imagine that you're part of a project that's responsible for deploying some weather stations. You might be inclined to publish all the data from all the weather stations in a single publication, maybe even in a single file. However, there are other weather stations in the region that have been deployed by different projects. Now imagine you're someone looking for data. Most likely you're going to want to use the data from all the weather stations together, regardless of which project that the weather station belongs to. In fact, in some cases, you might have never even heard of a project. So, for many data users, grouping the data together by project can be arbitrary. So this is how you've got to think about your data. Your data are your contribution to a much larger network of data that someone might want to use altogether. So, when it comes to publishing our data, we need to think about what's best for the data users. And I'm not talking about the data users within your project here. You probably know them, so when you're sharing data internally, you can group the data together however you like. I'm talking about data users in 10 years, in 100 years' time, perhaps at the other side of the world, people who are not aware of your data. So what's better for these data users? Finer granularity or coarser granularity? Which makes it easier for them to find, access, and use the data that they're interested in? I recommend that you publish finer granularity data. This means dividing stations or deployments into different files. It means dividing up long time series of data into perhaps daily or monthly files, depending on whether the data user is likely to want to access individual days or months of data. And it might also mean dividing certain data variables into different files, depending on whether the different sets of variables are likely to have different sets of data users. But don't go over the top with this. Group together variables where it makes sense to group them together. I'm going to give you four reasons why finer granularity data is better. But first, I know, I know that the idea of publishing your data in dozens or perhaps even hundreds of files might seem daunting or even ridiculous to some of you. That's why the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create many uh, NetCDF files quickly and easily within a single Python script. And in the video after that, I'm going to show you how you can access and use data from multiple NetCDF files together in a single Python script. And you probably also want to showcase your project and don't like the idea of citing dozens or hundreds of files within your publication. I get that. But now there is a solution. Many good data centers now use parent-child relationships for their publications. So you get a single DOI and a recommended citation for each child CF net CDF file, but you also get a parent DOI and recommended citation for the parent. So that's a single DOI for all the data you're publishing. Now, if someone uses the data from one or a couple of the stations, they can cite each child that they use. If someone uses most or all of the data, they can cite the parent. And this has the added benefit of actually making it more transparent which data people are actually using within their publications. So now, without further ado, four reasons why finer granularity data is better. Number one, each file can have its own set of metadata. If we're using the attribute convention for data discovery for our global attributes and you should be using them. Then we have these attributes for geospatial lat min, geospatial lat max, geospatial lon min, and geospatial lon max. These attributes divide a bounding box around your data. If we're looking for data in a data center or a data access portal, files that include lots of different locations show up on a map as a bounding box. Now, without opening up the file, we can't see which locations within that bounding box have been sampled. A data user might not be interested in the whole region specified by your bounding box. 
Now, if data are published station by station, the files show up as points on the map. So it's clear to the data user where the data have been collected. So coarser granularity makes it harder for the data user to find and isolate only the data that they're interested in. And the same logic applies to long time series of data, or for why we might want to divide up certain variables into different files. Number two, smaller, simpler files are easier to create, understand, and use. Imagine we have some depth profiles from CTD casts. If we separate the data into separate casts, each file needs to only have one dimension, that could be depth or pressure, and a single coordinate variable. If we decide to group all of our CTD casts together, we need to have an additional dimension, time, as well as variables for latitude and longitude, rather than just having the time, latitude and longitude in the global attributes. Number three, finer granularity datasets are more efficient. Back to our CTD profiles example, the depth dimension and the coordinate variable need to encompass all of the depth profiles. But most likely, you're sampling different depths at different stations. Maybe the water depth is different. Maybe you're interested in different depths at different locations. And creating a single array for all the depths. Then I need to create a two-dimensional array, time and depth in the dimensions, for my data variables, temperature in this case. And this array has to be padded with NAN values each time a depth has not been sampled within that depth profile. So in this simple example, with just four depth profiles, we can already see that we have a lot of NANs, which is just messy and makes the data harder to use. And finally, number four. For the three reasons I've just specified, finer granularity datasets are easier for data managers like me to build services upon. A service could be on-the-fly visualization of your data in a data center or perhaps on a data access portal. A service could also be combining data from multiple files together into one file that you can download and use. So even if you publish your data in many separate files, it's possible for data centers or data access portals to include programs to bring the data together into a single file as you download them. This might not be an option in most data centers or data access portals at the moment, but remember, when it comes to publishing data, you can't just think about what's possible now, but you should be thinking about what's going to be possible in the future if you publish your data in the correct way. Remember that people are going to be using your data for years, probably decades into the future. So people all too often only think about the level of granularity that's necessary for human interpretation. But finer granularity is necessary for machine interpretation. In other words, finer granularity is necessary for people like me to build services on top of your data to showcase them. Finer granularity allows computers to do the data preparation so that humans can focus on the analysis and the interpretation. So to wrap up, some final tips. Publish data at the finest functional granularity. That's not individual measurements, but it's also not combining stations into one data set. Never combine data with different temporal dimensions. So if you have one measurement every second and a different measurement every hour, publish them in separate files. And also don't combine data with different spatial dimensions. Divide time series up based on what's useful for the data users. And finally, divide up data variables where it's sensible to do so. And you as a data creators will know better than I do about when this is. So that's everything for this one. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this useful, leave me a comment and like and subscribe. And as promised, in the next video, I'll be showing you how to create multiple NetCGF files in one simple and easy Python script. And also stay tuned for the video after that, where I'll be showing you how you can access and use data from multiple NetCGF files within a single Python script. See you next time.